Hey everybody and welcome to another IEM review here on Passion for Sound. Today we're talking C Audio Nico and that's the pronunciation I'm going with. Hopefully that's the right one. That's the box you get it in obviously. I might actually even use the specs on here before we go and have a look at the website. So what we've got here is a six balanced armature per side IEM with a sensitivity of 110 decibels per milliwatt and impedance of 25 ohms. So nothing unique, nothing outstanding there. Having a look at the inside, the accessories that you receive with this one, I'll hold it up so hopefully you can see it there. Come on blur, turn off blur. So hopefully you can see there that you get a nice case with it. You also get a range of um, both silicon and foam tips. You get a 4.4 mil or a 3.5 mil choice of connector. There's no 2.5 mil there. 2.5 seems to be disappearing out of um, common inclusions, which I don't think is too bad of a thing. I think 4.4 is a far better connector than 2.5. I don't dislike 2.5, but I just think 4.4 is even better. And then if we look at the IEMs themselves in typical C audio style, I should say, they're a really nice looking IEM, beautifully made. C Audio seem to put a lot of care into the aesthetics of their designs, if you care about that. I know some do, some don't. And so that's them there. Nice design. We'll have a look at them on the website in a second so you can see closer. But they use little mother of pearl inserts inside the top faceplate acrylic, which is quite pretty. So here, this is them there. Now that price is not in US dollars, even though I've tried to change it to US dollars up here. That's the Australian dollar price. The US dollar price off the top of my head is about 698, I think I saw. Let me find out. So yeah, they've just checked the database that I keep and it's about 700 US dollars for these. So they're a, you know, a premium sort of priced IEM. They're getting up there, but they're still, I think within, you know, the way I look at it in the sort of not crazy level pricing. They're not above a thousand US dollars type levels. The, as you can see here, better better look at the shells, really pretty design shell. Obviously some of you won't like it because it's too pretty. Others will love it for that reason. And um, I think we know everything else we need to know. Six balanced armatures per side, moderate specifications, pretty straightforward. And so I want to say, by the way, the reason I'm, I'm on this website, I want to say a huge thanks to Melbourne chi -Fi Audio for sending over the C Audio Nikos to try. And then let's take a look at their measurements. If you didn't see yesterday's video on the Tigerism Heli Anthus IEMs, I did a bit of explanation in there about target curves and preferences and stuff like that. So maybe go check that one out if you haven't seen that. I'm not going to go into detail on target curves here other than to say that this is my preference. This is how I like an IEM to sound. It doesn't mean it's the only way it should sound. And it's quite different from a lot of the sort of true neutral targets like Edemotic, for instance. So keep that in mind. It is just a preference. It's not a target in terms of it's not what all IEMs should measure to. And so looking at the Nico's measurements here, it says to me it's going to be an IEM that I probably should quite enjoy. It's not going to have quite the base impact and presence that I personally like. It's probably going to be more of a warm, kind of smooth, consistent bass rather than a punchy, deep rumble bass. And um, it may or may not cause me some problems with the energy around one and a half to two kilohertz. I have to wait and see. This peak up here close to eight kilohertz is an artifact from the measurer. So ignore that a little bit, but it has got a little bit of treble peakiness, but really it, it should be quite a smooth listen looking at this graph. And so I think with all that said, let's take a listen to it. And then as you can see here, I've got queued up the Orobetti OH700VB, which is a similarly priced $700 IEM, one that I really enjoyed when I reviewed it just recently. So that's going to be my comparison. But first, let me listen to the uh, C Audio Nico without any comparisons and just see what it sounds like all on its own. By the way, listening from Chord Poly and Mojo 2. So having done a bit of listening, these are a really kind of what I would call a delicately tuned IEM. And by the way, I, I didn't notice this before. They're actually a very compact shell. So even though there's six balanced armatures per side, they're a really tight, compact, and really well molded, sort of as in highly contoured universal IEM. They're very, very comfortable and sit really snugly in the ear. So that's worth keeping in mind. The, the sound from them I would describe as delicate and quite neutral, but with just a little bit of extra, I guess articulation is what I would say. So where the energy has been placed with these, they bring out sounds like acoustic guitar strums and plucks really, really nicely. They don't have quite the sense of warmth and body that I personally enjoy or prefer, but they're very, very enjoyable regardless. I think for me, there's a little bit too much energy in this upper mid-range band. Looking at the, the graph, the one and a half to 2K range of these 
is just a little tiny bit forward on some tracks for my ears. It brings the presence and the prominence of the upper mid range and particularly in vocals a little bit too forwards. And I think possibly some of it's the, the scoop out just before that rise makes it a little bit unnatural around some vocals for my ears. But having said that, I was just listening at the end there to Run That Body Down by Paul Simon and the guitar work and the clarity and the crispness from the Nico is really, really excellent, incredibly enjoyable. So I think for me, they're an IEM that I don't quite love because I like more bass, but I could absolutely see people adoring the sound that these give. The soundstage is natural, excellent image placement, detail, resolution, tonality is excellent across the board with the exception of that fact that I find the, the upper mid range a little bit forward, but that's going to be different from person to person. I think these are really excellent. And so what I like to do as always though, is get a sense of just how good they are by putting them up against another IEM at the same price that I also think is excellent. And so I've got here the Oravetti RH700VB. If you haven't seen the video for this one, it was in my recent um, I did a run of Oravetti IEMs, including this was the last one in the Oravetti range that I reviewed. And what this is good for is that it's got two different versions. So it's got the sort of bassy version in the green and the less bassy version in the purple. It's hard to know which one to compare with the Nico because the bass contour is so different. It's not like the lower bass level just flattens out the bass, it, it really scoops it out. So I think I'm probably going to test the one that I like the most. And the one that I like the most is actually, let's get rid of this one. The one that I like the most is with the switch down. So that's where the switch goes down into the kind of towards the earlobe. So I'm going to compare now the Nico, which is sounding fantastic, with the kind of fairly similar, if you look at the top end, there's obviously some deviation, but not a lot of deviation between these two. It's really all about how they handle the mid-range through that sort of, what, 400 through 1 kilohertz band, and then how they handle the bass from the 300 range down to about the 80, and then obviously above um, or, or below 80 where it starts to really kick higher. So they've got quite different contouring in the bass, fairly similar in the treble. That's going to be interesting to try out. Let's take a listen. This is a really tough one to separate. So listening to Lover, You Should Have Come Over, both IEMs are doing some things that are excellent and both of them are outdoing each other in other areas. The, the Nico actually comes across the more, and you can sort of see it, it's the more tonally balanced IEM because there's less peaks and troughs. The mid-range actually comes across smoother and a bit richer because you've got more of this 150 to 300 hertz energy. The presentation of it is a little bit more coherent as a result. Everything blends together more accurately from a tonal perspective. And I don't mean that in terms of a lacking separation, there's still excellent separation, but everything's just more connected from a frequency point of view. So I think in that area, the Nico is excellent. They're also fantastic with things like the, the clarity I mentioned before with strummed guitars and those upper frequency sounds are really beautifully managed. They're, they're refined, they're controlled, but they're also very crisp and clean. However, where things do get undone a little tiny bit for the Nikos for me is that they don't handle sibilance quite as well on this track. So on, on Lover You Should Have Come Over, the the sounds like the turt sounds are just a little bit hot in the recording. And I'm guessing it's this peak around sort of four and a half K. It starts to get a little bit sibilant from the Nico, which is not that the Nico is naturally a sibilant IEM, just that when you do get that extra energy, it's got a little bit of extra sizzle there that it doesn't necessarily want if you've got a recording that's got sibilants that are a bit too much in them. Again, this is one of those areas that's going to be very personal. My target curve is quite low in the in sort of the the frequency bump around the HRTF area, the head related transfer function area, which essentially is talking about the fact that our if you look at, at the neutral graphs, let me pull up the etymotic one again. If you look at the neutral graphs like the etymotic, this bump here is all meant to make up for the fact that when we're listening to IEMs, we're not getting the natural dispersion of sound that would come from a pair of speakers and hit both ears. And that actually creates some emphasis in that area that our ears expect to hear. That's the kind of simplified version of it. For some people, that sort of bump in the four, sort of two to four kilohertz range is very positive. For me, it's too much. And therefore, some of you will just find the Nikos absolutely glorious and actually think of them as a slightly smooth but articulate sounding IEM. So I don't want people to be put off by what I'm saying here. 
if though you tend to align with my preferences, you may find the treble from the Nikos just a little bit hot in some of the sibilants on tracks where there is a little bit of extra energy there that you might not want. So it's only on those specific tracks that you have to worry about. Having said that, let's now talk about the OH700VB. The first thing is obviously they've got a much better sense of presence down low. So things like kick bass, there's a bit more emphasis and, and body and weight there that I did find was missing a little bit from the Nico. It's not that you want lots and lots and lots and lots of bass, but definitely I think a little bit more than what the Nico has is closer to what I would expect to hear in a live venue sort of going and listening to a band. It sounds more like what I hear from the OH700 than it does from the Nico. On the other hand, though, the, the suck out that happens in the RH700VB, that starts to cause some problems in terms of that connectedness. So I found that um, Jeff Buckley's vocals didn't have the smoothness and the, the deeper resonance that I thought it needed to have. The Nico is in no way a thick or rich sounding IEM, but the vocals sounded more complete from the Nico than it did from the RH700VB. Where the, the slight sort of not lumpiness, but the, the extra contouring, you could say, in the OH700VB tuning comes in, though, is that it actually separates sounds even better. There's a greater sense of depth in the sound stage, and sounds pop out of space a little bit more than they do on the Nico. The Nico spreads things a bit more left-right. It's got an excellent sense of size and space in the lateral plane of the sound stage, but not as much depth and layering, I don't think. And that's where some of the, the lumpiness and the tuning of the OH700 actually helps it. I think ultimately, though, what I would say, if you were to put these two in front of me, I'm probably going to reach for the OH700VB, but it's only because I really like that extra bit of sense of emphasis and weight in the bass. It doesn't actually mean that it's the better IEM, and I, I hope that's coming across clearly that this is 100% my preference. I actually think the Nico is probably the better IEM. I think it handles the technicalities better. Some of that articulation in the top end is better. I think the, the tonal balance from bass through mids through treble is a little bit better. I just love an IEM with a bit more bass, and that's where I'd probably lean towards the OH700VB. But this is a tough call. Yeah, I'm even, even as I say it, I'm not convinced. The other thing that's, that's slightly going in favour of the OH700VB for me is that it doesn't have quite as much energy around this 2K mark. It's only a small difference but it is enough of a difference that for me, it makes them a little bit more enjoyable, not quite as forward in the upper mids. And that's something that I have a bit of a personal kind of sensitivity to, and it does get in the way of my enjoyment. So I think both of these are really, really fantastic. The Nico is one of the most comfortable IEMs I've tried in a long time, particularly those that aren't the sort of tiny nozzle Shaw or West Tone style. For a normal style nozzled IEM with a universal acrylic shell, I think they're absolutely incredibly comfortable very compact and wonderfully kind of just disappear into the ears type of IEM. So they're an IEM that I'm going to recommend definitely. Not quite my preference, but they're absolutely brilliant, excellent, technically strong, really solid contender in my opinion. So hopefully that's given you a sense of whether they're a good IEM for you. As I said before in some of my other recent IEM videos, you can always go to pfs.squig.link and compare measurements of IEMs that you might know with the, um, in this case, the Nico. So you can just search through the brands, the models, you can just type in up here what you want and find the IEMs that you know and compare them for yourself with the Nico. And then there's also a whole lot of other reviewers that have their own squig sites, which you can see down here where you can go and compare other IEMs that they might have. You can't put them on the exact same graph, but you can jump over to their squig links and check those out too. So I hope this video has been useful and helpful in introducing you to the Nico or telling you more about the Nico and giving you my preferences on them. If you have found it useful and helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe and ring the notification bell if you haven't already. And remember that tomorrow I'm going to be releasing my review of the T-Audio Hype 10. And this one's going to be really interesting because it sits really closely. If I get rid of the OH700VB for a moment, it sits really closely with my preference curve. You can see there it almost matches it exactly a little bit high in the treble. So we'll see how it goes there, but it's looking like a really promising IEM. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell if you want to see that one. But for now, let me leave it to the music. So happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Passion for Sound.